Hello, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to cover probably the best Kuva farm in existence, the arbitration. So we're going to cover how to most effectively farm arbitrations, how to get the most Vitus Essence and Kuva possible, all the builds you're going to need, everything. I should do timestamps for all the builds, so if you're only looking for a certain one or certain maps, you can click to that. But this is going to cover all bases where you can find squads, all the good stuff, so stick around. Remember, like, subscribe for more guides and endgame content, and let's get into it. Also, to celebrate 1600 subs, I decided to make a Discord server. So there is a link to that server in the description if you want it. You can find and ping for squads, you can just, whatever, it's just a server, you know how it is. So yeah, check it out if you want. So let's cover the basics of what arbitrations actually are. So arbitrations are endless missions in a type of challenge mode. They have shorter timers between waves and they have these little drones that protect enemies and make them invincible until you kill the drone. So the drones is where Vita Sessence actually comes from and it drops 6% of the time. However, that drop chance is affected by boosters and blessing so we can get it up to 24% drop chance. Uh, Obviously, if you're farming for a long period of time, you want to be running boosters and blessing, uh, and we'll cover that just now. Okay, so the best missions to farm arbitrations is actually defense and interception. So these two are the best because there's very, very small timers between waves, which allows us to progress really quickly. And also, the tile sets are usually very, very small. So there can only be five arbitration drones on the map at one time. And let's say survival, with their huge tile sets, spawns a drone a thousand meters away. You might never find that drone, and that's losing Vitus Essence for you across the entire run. So with these small tile sets, we can just blow them up with AoE weapons. The enemies will spawn, instantly die, and then we move on to the next wave. Very quick, very easy. So arbitrations actually disappear after you complete an arbitration. Uh, and you have to wait for the next rotation. Now I'm going to tell you a little trick to get around that uh, and play the arbitration twice instead of just once. Don't know whether it's an exploit or not, but whatever. Okay, so the first thing you want to do with your squad is go to a relay for a blessing. So I'm going to load into this relay and we'll be back. Okay, so I'm at the relay and with your squad you would make sure everybody is in the relay before you bless and then you would bless resource drop chance. There you go. So once you've dropped the blessing, you want to leave the relay to make sure it applies. As there is actually a bug which uh, blessings will not apply when you're inside a relay that you've just been blessed in. Don't know why that works, but yeah. Now we're going to go back to the relay. And we're going to host the arbitration from this relay. We'd select up here, excavation, and we would begin the mission. So once the mission has been completed, everybody would leave the relay and the host would re-invite everyone to the squad. Now another one of the squad members would access the navigation and they would still be able to see said arbitration and they would just select that and everyone on the team would be able to ready up. That way you would be able to play it twice. So let's go over a summary. Go to the relay, bless, leave the relay. Go back to the relay, host selects the mission and you play it. Everybody leaves the relay again, host invites everyone back, and then someone else on the squad can select the arbitration. It sounds complicated, but it isn't, I promise you. Give it a try, it works. Cool. Alright, let's move on to the builds. Okay, so let's start with the weapon. This weapon is the same for every single setup, apart from the Wisp. We're using a Heat Kuva Ogris, but the element itself doesn't actually matter. Uh, just go for a high percent, but Heat is the best for arbitration. So, here's the build, it's Rivenless. If you have a Riven, you're going to want to replace a Vigilante Armaments. Go for something like Damage Multishot, Damage Reload Speed, Multishot Reload Speed, something like that. Nightwatch Napalm is crucial on the Kuva Ogres, that's the main part of this build is the Nightwatch Napalm. Prime Firestorm, obviously, and then we have a lot of magazine related stuff to stop us running out of ammo. Uh, Heavy Caliber, the negative accuracy is actually really good for the spread, the pellets will spread everywhere and you'll cover a lot more of the map. And then the Bane obviously just changed that depending on who you're fighting against. Your secondary and melee don't actually matter at all. Some people like to remove them because they think it gives them more chance for an affinity boost. Uh, with the Kavat, totally up to you. I don't know, I don't care. So another thing that stays with every single build 
is the SME to cover out. Now, obviously the Affinity Booster literally doubles your drops, so why you wouldn't want to run that, I don't know. But Charm is the mod you need, Tech Assault can help it survive, but when you have a Wisp on the squad, it shouldn't die anyway. Uh, I've never seen a cat die in an arbitration, really, with this strategy, so you should be fine. Make sure you got Fetch, all the Link bits and pieces, and that's pretty much it. So now let's take a look at the Gear Wheel. The Gear Wheel is actually really important for Arby's. Uh, as it helps us keep our ammo actually up. So an optional thing is energy restore, always nice to have. And ammo restore, optional but very nice to have of course when we're spraying an AoE weapon across the map. Now the two really important things are actually the spectres. Now one of these spectres is a Nidus spectre and the other one is a Proteus spectre. I'll show you that in the forge now. So as you can see my Vapor spectre is Nidus Prime. Now Nidus has Parasitic Link which can link to your mainframe and give you more strength bonus on every cast. Uh, I think I covered that in the uh, Ivara video, so I won't go too much into that. Now, the other Spectre I have, the Force Spectre, is Protea. Now, Protea is really, really good because of Dispensary. Dispensary from the Spectre will basically drop ammo, energy, everything everywhere, and you need ammo. So I recommend get these Spectres and just build loads of them. They're cheap as hell. Build them. Also, you might want to consider Ancient Healer Spectres, they're from New Loka, really really cheap, uh, and they prevent knockdown, staggers, and they tank a bunch of damage for you. So yeah, pretty cool. On all of these builds, we're going to be running Madurai, as Madurai has access to Void Strike for the extra damage and the extra ammo efficiency, and we have Sling Strength to add more strength to every single cast. Okay, so let's take a look at the first roll. Sarian. Now Sarian is the DPS role of the squad and will have the most damage percent by far. Um, this Sarian Prime has Contagion Cloud and Venom Dose. We have Prime Sure Footed of course to stay up and Power Donation. Now everything else of course is just sort of strength and duration. We're running Energized Munitions on the 4 that allows us to spray at the spawn points way faster, killing everything almost instantly. To play Sarian you would just want to hold 1 to get Venom Dose going. You would press 3 to get Toxin Lash going, and press 4 when you start shooting. We're running more duration and more strength over here, and that's pretty much all it is. Just keep your buffs going, buff your team, kill everybody. Simple as that. Now over here we have a Nourish instead of Energized Munitions. This is probably a little bit harder to play and not as beginner friendly, but it's still very, very strong. So now let's take a look at how we play Sarian in a full squad. Okay, so let's take a look at the second role. We have Mirage. Now, Mirage is sort of your secondary DPS, your support character, kind of in between. So, we're running Dispensary on Mirage, and that's because Mirage has a very, very high strength. And look at the extra pickup chance we get here 80% pickup chance. That means there's going to be more ammo, more energy, all that stuff dropping out of the Dispensary, and it's really, really good. Obviously, we have Eclipse with 644% damage boost. Total Eclipse to buff all the team. Prime Surefooted to keep you nice and alive and on your feet. And yeah, the rest of it is just strength and range boost, pretty much. We have more duration here and more strength. And uh, that's very, very simple. All you want to do, make sure your first ability is up, your third ability is up, and your fourth ability is up, and you're good to go. Again, with Mirage, we are using Madurai for the sling strength and the cast speed from that. Uh, yeah, that's about it, really. So let's take a look what that looks like in an arbitration squad.
Okay, so the third role we're going to take a look at is Vault. Now, Vault is a support frame, kind of, also kind of a DPS frame. So, we have Shock Trooper and Thermal Transfer on this build, and that's because they are very good buffs. So, you want to make sure your first ability has Shock Trooper going all the time, and Thermal Transfer should be going all the time, and that way your team will one-shot everything. Speed is really nice here, as your team gets faster reload and can run to collect Vitus Essence much quicker. The shield is not used very often, to be honest with you. It gives a little bit of damage bonus, but I don't think it's really worth it. Uh, of course, we have more strength on our Arcane and more duration, exactly the same as always. Uh, Prime Surefooted and Power Donation, the rest of it you can just copy yourself. Simple as that. And again, we're running Madurai with the setup, just for the sling strength. So let's take a look at how we actually play Vault in a four-man squad. Okay, so the next role we're going to take a look at is Wisp. Now, Wisp is very different. Wisp is a complete support frame. We don't even run the Kuva Ogress on Wisp. As you can see, we're running the Aphentis. Now, the Aphentis has a secondary fire, which is like a throne thingy, and it makes an aura. Now, as you can see here, throw Aphentis onto the ground to buff nearby allies with the Bastari Might. The buff increases reload speed, fire rate, and ammo pools, and reduces recoil. That's crazy. The build for this is very very simple, it's literally just a reload speed fire rate type of dude. Simple as that, no former. And now let's take a look at Wisp. Wisp is a full on, just support frame. Now I will warn you, this arcane should be maxed, and this should be maxed, but as you can see I've run out of space and I'm poor. So anyway, we have enemy radar, just to show everyone where the spawns are. We have power drift just to more strength and then everything else here is just strength crazy strength we have a little bit of duration to counteract all the negative duration we got going on and uh prime sure footed so you don't fall over and that's that's literally it you want to make sure your team has raw up at all times and your reservoirs you don't put the shock one down but you do put the haste and the health and that is literally it for wisp once you drop the moats and give people raw you can just kind of chill throw your spear and that's about it. And as always, we're running Madurai for Sling Strength and Void Strike, but you don't really need it on this. So now let's go take a look at some very interesting Wisp footage where I just stand still. So to cash in all the Vitus Essence you've earned, you want to go to Arbiters of the Hexes in any relay, speak to this dude here on the left, and as you can see you get a shop. Now Kuva is just down here, and after two runs I have 700 which is insane, and I would buy all the Kuva I need with that. And that's 330k just from like one of the double dip strategy where we play the map twice, and yeah, easy peasy.
So some of you out there might be interested in trying this strategy, but you have nowhere to find a squad. So of course, I'm going to provide some options for you. In the description, there is a link to the Arbitration Discord. That Discord server is a fantastic place to find builds, information, advice, it's great, and squads of course. Uh, it has information about all the best possible maps to play. Uh, you can react to the role to get pinged when they appear on the arbitrations. They have a whole written Google Doc about these builds and all sorts of cool information. Very good server. Go check it out uh, if you want to find arbitration squads. Of course, link is in the description. And then I've got my server. I don't know how many people are going to join that, but you never know. Uh, I have a reaction role set up for arbitrations, so if you want to farm, you can ping hosting arbitration, people can react and join. Cool. Or you have recruit chat. Obviously, it's not the most reliable place on the planet, but it is something, you know, whatever. Alright, so hopefully you learned how to farm arbitrations efficiently. If you enjoyed, of course, like, subscribe, do all that jazz. And uh, yeah, catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for the support and peace.